Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Opal Unicorn. Today I would like to read a small little excerpt from one of my meditations in my book, A World Within a World. And it's from the chapter, The Moth Queen. I entered a rocky planet with an extra large moon orbiting above. We entered to find a world filled with crystalline moths fluttering through the faceted trees of gemstones, glowing through the moonlight. We flew to a large cave at the base of a mountain whose peak rose so high the fog covered the top. Swooping down to land, the three birds dropped me in the rocky terrain and saluted as they flew up and disappeared into the glowing mist of the world inhabited by topaz and citrine moths. Blue and gray rocks and a moon illuminated everything below. I slowly marched into the mouth of the cave. The darkness softened by the torches and openings in the cave that let the moonlight shine through. Was it always nighttime here? I walked for what seemed like hours through tunnels and winding lit by the glowing moonlight. Finally, I made it to the base of a very long staircase. Up, 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 until I reached a doorway with a heavy marble door. I push, pushed it open and found myself in a large circular gallery, sitting on a glass throne carved in ornate floral filigree swirls was a giant woman. Standing about 12 feet tall, sitting on her throne, she stood looming high over me. The walls were smoothed and polished, gleaming in the reflection of the moon, shining through the small rock carved windows. She was stern looking, holding a glare that could pierce through all the rock in her mountain cave dwelling. She didn't move a muscle. She strained deep in thought like she was elsewhere. I made my way to the foot of her throne. The moths sparkled and fluttered around, filling the room with stars of reflected moonlight. They softly clattered their wings as they flew about. Hundreds perched on the queen herself, encasing her like a fine piece of jewelry, a cameo with her in the center. Her eyes shifted and focused on me. Her large, honey-colored eyes softened the hard stare as she watched me, through me. She wasn't looking at my physical body, but straight to the essence of my soul. It was most naked experience, feeling the eyes of a being penetrating me so potently through me as if I were not solid matter, that I felt all my thoughts, past, present, and future, being folded out like a napkin, being rolled out, my entire soul bare in the sight of those great eyes. I could tell her eyes could see through the darkness. I don't know how I knew, like she was in my head, like she was already there reading my observations, fears, ideas, wishes, and dreams. The more I tried to fight it, the less my vision seemed to work. It was like our brains had connected by invisible tentacles growing from her large jewel-encrusted crown. I could no longer fight her entering my mind if I didn't want to go blind. My eyes were hers now. She was seeing through me, through her own eyes. The pain was unbearable at first, her eyes entering mine this way. I squeezed them shut, sharp pain overtaking me. It felt like bloody tears were screaming down my face. I covered my eyes in a futile attempt to stop the excruciating jabs of pain of lightning bolts striking through the orbs of my eyes. Don't fight it, Sonny. Just let it go. Let me in. Let me in. Her voice was soft and melodic, soothing and hypnotizing. I felt the pain subsiding, and I slowly opened my eyes. A moonlight pierced now, as if my eyes have been damaged. Slowly, my vision returned, and I acclimated to the light and could once again rest my eyes on the vision at the center of the room. My little girl, how you have suffered letting me in. Let me assure you, you had not allowed me to eventually enter. It would have been far worse. Her large lips formed a crooked smile as she said this. Her curled golden pointed finger beckoning me to come closer. I did as she wished, too weak at this point to think on my own. A marionette pulled by invisible strings. No need to speak at the moment anyways, darling. I know I'm not easy to be around. It's not that I want to hurt you. It's just my energy and the energy of my planet. Please try to understand. Her words flowed without a trace of malice, 
but held no emotion either, her tone conveying how intense she truly was to be around. Now I'm going to skip a little bit to the meditation. Let me explain myself, dear. You don't need to speak much around me because my eyes pierce through every wall, every soul, every world. The moon herself I see through. All the dark matter is revealed through the orbs in my skull. All I can pass through light and darkness all at the same time, although darkness is where I am needed. All in the night, in the black cloak of evening, in matter, in essence, is hidden, but not for me. I see what others cannot. Even those that dwell in the darkness cannot even see what I see. And do you know why? Why? I whispered hoarsely. Because those who live in the darkness are beings of the light and are afraid of the opposite. Those who live in the light are afraid of the darkness. I encompass both. I'm an anomaly of creatures, balancing precariously between these two, light and darkness. I see, I whispered. I know your thoughts as well as you are aware, as I know everything, everyone's thoughts, everyone's fears, every secret, every dream. It is a lonely place to live, Sunny. If I were capable of those emotions, she said wryly. Thankfully, I have evolved from such experiences. Having lived on this planet since I created it with my mind billions of years ago, her moth wings clapped gently. She rested her glowing face against her long fingered hand, head cocked slightly to one side and sighed. <sighs> I know why you're here. You want your wings. But as you are well aware, thanks to the bird people, your kind don't have wings. You need a solution. You need me to uncover one of the infinite secrets of the universe. One personally having to do with you, a loophole, a way around the general rule, a way to grant you access to those facilities otherwise left ungranted to your people. Yes, I croaked. I need the key. Again, she sighed. Ah, yes, the key and the wings. Well then, here they are. She pulled a document from underneath her long coat, swirling with two-dimensional whirlpools of moth prints. It looked old and stained. The pages had pictures of geometric-like shapes. Thank you for watching. This is Opal Unicorn, and I hope you enjoyed my little excerpt from the Moth Queen. Um, she is the bringer of darkness. She lives in the darkness, unafraid, and she is naturally in living within the shadows. She's the queen of the shadows. She she's embodies the shadows, and she is a crystalline moth form. And her archetype and her energy is about embracing the shadow self and being able to be fearless in that confrontation of the shadow. Thank you so much for watching. This is Opal Unicorn. I hope you enjoyed my little excerpt from my book, A World Within a World, and I hope that you tune in for more stories. Goodbye.